Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Wonderful Lord. presence of the Lord here tonight. And we are so happy to have uh, brother and sister Nick and Pam Cisco with us. Uh, thank you, brother. Amen. 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 They are family. Amen. Family in a couple of ways here. But most importantly, spiritually. Amen. They are part of us here. And uh, I just believe that God is going to use uh, him to minister to us. And we're just happy to see their smiling faces. Always have a smile on their faces. Amen. They're living in victory. Amen. That doesn't mean that things are always easy. They're missionaries and they put on hundreds of thousands of miles. Amen. But they just keep on going. They've got their hand in the hand of the Lord and they're, they're obeying the Lord and they're going for us who cannot go. Some go by giving and some give by going. Amen. I guarantee you that they're going and giving in every sense of the word. So God bless you, Brother Cisco. And uh, we've got a water here for you. Amen. Help you go a little longer. Amen. If you love the word of the Lord tonight, you. Amen. God bless that brother. We want you to take your liberty and do whatever God lays on your heart. Thank you very much, Pastor Gowan. Praise the Lord, everyone. You can be seated in Jesus' name. It is an honor and a joy to be back at Abundant Life. It's, it's been a while. And uh, right now, if it was actually based on our human plans, I would be in South Africa right now. But uh, based on God's plan, yes. I'm here tonight. Praise the Lord. And I know that he does all things well. Yes. And so we trust the Lord and the plan of the Lord mm. uh, and the purpose of the Lord, really. Yes. Man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his steps. That's and so right. So we have that assurance that as long as we're doing our part, then God's going to order our steps. Amen. Um, before we get into the Word of God, just a few things I would love to share with you and then also have uh, my wife greet you Wonderful. in Jesus' name. I have been over in South Africa, in Lesotho, and Mozambique for about six weeks while we've been waiting for some important documentation so we can actually go back for the long term. And uh, I just recently came back from our national conference in Mozambique. And we thank God there were uh, 15 that we know of, for sure, that received the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. And we rejoice over that. Amen. We also had uh, one minister that was ordained during the conference and then 10 new licensed ministers. Wonderful. So we're thankful that the church in Mozambique is, is growing and moving forward. And we're just expecting God for great things. Mm. And then in two weeks uh, from now, we're having a crusade in Durban. That's on the east coast of South Africa. We have a team of about 15 coming from the states and plans have been made and there's a 2,000 seat tent that's been rented. Wow. And we're believing that God's gonna help us fill that tent, Amen. but more so yes. that souls are going to be born into the kingdom of God Amen. in the city of Durban two Praise weeks from God. now. So if you can pray with us, we are just believing God. But here's a request, if you wouldn't mind, just joining with us right now to pray over. As I said, there's just some documentation that we need in order to return. We thought we would be back this past week, or this weekend right now, but we've had to change our tickets again, and we're waiting for this to come from the office in Toronto. But if you would pray that God would just touch whosoever heart needs to be touched, and uh, those in authority, according to the will of God, would yes. release what needs to be released this week so we can be on a plane next Sunday. Yes. That's when the ticket's been changed to. And uh, if you'll just join us with in, in prayer for this right now, and I think specifically as we just pray, God, let your will mm. be done. Yes. I know what I think, but hey, I don't profess to be God and don't want to be God. And as pastor said, that's why I can still smile. <laughs> There's a lot going on in several of the countries even. But God's God and it's Amen. his kingdom. Amen. But let's just pray that should there be opposition from the enemy, mm -hmm. 
that God would overcome that. Yes. And that what God wills, Amen. he will do in the next few days. So if you just join me, just where you're Hallelujah. seated, just lift your voice just pray and, and lift your hands right now, if you will. And let's just pray right now. Father, we pray right now. We know that you're the King of kings or the Lord of lords. There is no God like you. There is no God beside you. Lord, you do all things according to the counsel of your own will. And right now, God, we pray that, Lord Jesus, you will bring together what needs to be brought together, that you will process what needs to be processed according to your purpose, Father, and that, Lord, we will return and continue, Lord, the ministry that you have called us to do in your timing. But we come against any hindrance right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bind any plan of the enemy and we loose the purpose, the word, the will of God into this situation. Lord, I pray that we will get the response that you have determined. Lord, as you have willed and determined in heaven, let it be so on earth right now. Now, Lord, as we join our faith, as we join our voices in our hearts, Lord, believing and releasing, Lord, your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. And let everybody say amen. Amen. It's amen. Done. Amen. Amen. Again, it's just a privilege to be here. Thank you, Pastor Gowan, for the opportunity. And uh, we just give glory to God. And I'm just going to have my wonderful wife uh, stand and greet you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, about to bring the mic down there and just say keep on preaching <laughs> take my notebook and take notes yes i thank god for, for blessing me with with pam and our our two children and uh we we just consider ourselves blessed and we also want to thank you for your partnership over the years uh we were driving here tonight and i we were talking about different things and i said you know we've been on this journey now for almost three decades and that doesn't seem possible, but uh, it's 27 years now in missions. Wow. And so, by the grace of God, we'll just keep on going and serving Amen. until Jesus says otherwise or calls us home. Yes. But with the time that we have remaining, I want to turn your attention to the book of Luke. And I want to talk about a story that all of us know, a familiar story in Luke chapter 5. And I want to read the first seven verses. <laughs> And then I just want to unpackage these verses and just see how the Lord would speak to us in a personal way uh, from these verses in a common story in Luke chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, So it was, as the multitude pressed about him, 
to hear the word of God, that he, Jesus, stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Yes. And I want to take my title from a phrase in verse 5 where Peter responded to the instructions of Jesus and he said, at your word, yes. I will. Wow. At your word, I will. Father, we thank you. Yes. We sent your presence in this place in a real way. Lord, your spirit is here in a way, Lord, and I believe that you want to speak to us a clear message. I pray, Lord, as we look into your word, that you will open our minds, open our hearts, that we will receive exactly what you have for us tonight. Lord, help me to communicate with clarity. Help me, dear God, to project what you have instructed me to share with this body of believers, the family of God here tonight. And we'll thank you for it. And Lord, we are believing that at the end you will confirm your word, Jesus, and you will work in our lives in a special way as we respond to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Look at the one beside you and say, at God's word, I will. Have you ever had to do something you did not like to do? Yes, sir. I mean, you did it, but you really did not want to do it. You did it maybe because your boss asked you to do it, or maybe you did it out of respect for the person who was making that request, but you really didn't want to do it. If you have ever found yourself in a situation that you did not think was favorable to you, then this is the same situation that Peter found himself in. He does not want to do what Jesus has requested. When you think about it, we understand that Peter and his colleagues are professional fishermen. They were experts in their field of work. And so the instructions that Jesus gave to them in verse 4 just did not make sense to Peter. Jesus says to Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And in verse 5, Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have worked hard all night. We're not lazy. We're not just sitting here being idle. We've worked hard, but we have nothing to show for it. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. If you have ever felt like God's word did not make sense in your particular situation, you were in the same boat that Peter was in. Peter, as an experienced fisherman, he could have given so many different reasons why he did not have to listen to God's word. We already heard one of them. Master, we've worked all night and we've caught nothing. And really what it was saying is what we've said without words, but our actions have said it. You know what I mean. I mean, nobody in this sanctuary tonight would say, God, I know better than you. We're not going to say that. 
but our actions sometimes say that we feel that we know better than God. I can only speak for myself, and sometimes you know what God's Word says, but you're like, in this particular situation, God, this Word doesn't apply. I mean, I, I know what you said, but this situation's a little different. Mm -hmm. And so my actions are saying, I think I know better than you, God. But here's the reality. Here's the truth. God always knows best. Why don't you turn to the one beside you and say, God always knows best. If Peter had refused to listen to God's word thinking, I know what the master has said, but he does not understand my situation. I'm a fisherman. This is what I do for a living. And right now, all I have are dirty, empty nets to show for my hard work. If Peter had stopped right there, it would have been a sad story. But thank God Peter went on to say, nevertheless, at your word, I will. I, you see, it, it doesn't matter how hard you have struggled through the night. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even matter how difficult things may be for you right now. If you will obey God's word, it will be well for you. Amen. Regardless of the struggle, because your success is not based upon your own abilities. Right. Your success is not even based upon your intelligence. Your success is not based on the people you know. Your success is based on God's word. Amen. It's a willingness to obey God's word. It says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may do or that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, when, when you obey the word of God, when you don't just talk about it, but you actually walk it out in your situation. Amen. It's not just something you think on continually, it's something you do, yes. you live it. And when you do that, you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Yes. God wants to take you to a place where it's not about what you can do, but what God can do through your obedience Amen. to his word. Yes. And when that happens, God gets the glory, but it was through your obedience. Over and over again in the word of God, we see this pattern that the blessings of God follow obedience to God. Yes. And so whenever the people of God obey God's word, whether they understand all of it or not, if they will obey it, then blessings follow. Amen. And here we see the same thing. Peter says, at your word, I will. Now, the word of God is filled with so many different I wills, but I just want to pause and give you a few I wills from the word of God. We know in Psalm 34, this was a psalm that David wrote when he pretended that he was insane before King Abimelech in Gath, and the king drove him out and he departed. But in his dilemma, in his distress, in his deplorable situation, David writes in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Sometimes we're going through situations that we may not be pretending that we're insane, but we can literally feel like it's making us insane. But the word of God says, bless him. Amen. You say, but I don't feel like blessing him. 
our praise to God and our worship to God goes beyond our feeling. Amen. If we'll say, God, I don't like it. I am confused. I'm overwhelmed. I feel like I'm losing it. But I will bless the Lord oh, yes. at all times. Praise His God. praise will continually be in my mouth. When you begin to praise yes. Him and you begin to declare the word of God, then the word yes. of God will manifest itself in your situation. And then the feelings will catch up to what you've declared Amen. as blessing and glorifying and uplifting the name of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 134, just a little background here, in the first two verses, the priests and the Levites here are normally staying up all night in the temple of God. They're to watch over the house of God. But they were not to sit there idly and just fill in the time just talking whatever they wanted to talk about, but they were to spend the night in devotion to God and they were to give God glory and praise and encourage themselves for the hope of God's grace and mercy. And so you read in Psalm 134, verse two, where they declare, I will lift up my hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Amen. I'm in his house. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to acknowledge him. There's a lot of things that I can be distracted with. There's a lot of things I can be worried about right now. But I will lift up my hands in the sanctuary. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I will bless Amen. the Lord. Yes. Why don't we just practice that right now? I don't know what you're worried about. I don't know what your situation is. But if you just lift your hands in the sanctuary and you just begin to bless the name of the Lord. God, you are good. God, your mercy endures forever. Just begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You, you can feel that right now. Just begin to respond to that right now. That's the presence of Almighty God saying, I like that. I can change your situation. I can turn your problem around as you just lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I worship you, dear God. I worship you, dear God. There's another incredible proverb, one of my favorites, Proverbs 3, verse 5. And this verse reminds us of the importance of trusting in God's word for instruction and direction. Because as smart as we think we may be, God always knows best. Yes, he does. And I'm reminded in Proverbs 3, 5, it just encourages us, I will trust in the Lord. With all my heart. Wow. I will not lean on my own understanding. Sometimes I'm my own worst enemy. That's right. Because I promise you, if I let my mind go, I can think of almost every scenario possible. Mm -hmm. And most of them <laughs> aren't positive. <laughs> Well, this could go wrong. Well, that could go wrong. Well, what about this and that? But I'm going to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. With all my heart. Amen. I'm yes, not going to lean on my own understanding. Right. Psalm 91 verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him. I will trust. I do not know tonight what your I will is, but if you will bring your thoughts, your, your words, your actions in line with the word of God, you will see God do amazing things in your life, in your family, in the situations, in the struggles that are part of life. But when you just remind yourself 
at the word of God, I will obey. There's a powerful transformation that takes place in your situation. But sometimes this flesh of ours protests. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And Peter is no different. Peter protests. He hears what Jesus says. And he says, Master, we have worked hard all night and caught nothing. Now, I, I don't know what Peter was actually thinking, but since he was human just like we are, I think we can make some good assumptions or conclusions to what Peter may have been thinking, and it would be pretty accurate. I think maybe Peter was thinking, Master, we are expert fishermen. We know what we're doing. The fish come to the surface at night, but in the day, they go deeper into the water. Master, great teacher, we know how to fish. And Peter may have been thinking because it was most likely the common um, thought and philosophy of the day that they believed that in the night the fish could not see the nets as well. So they would fish at night, thinking they would catch more fish. Mm. Peter was probably thinking, you're a great teacher, keep teaching. And you're not such a bad carpenter, keep building the tables. But don't tell us how to fish. <laughs> let us do what we know how to do, and we'll let you do what you know to do, and we'll even help you. You can, I mean, you are sitting in my boat. Come on, teach the crowd. But don't tell me how to fish. Yeah. You need to be careful that your flesh does not cause you to disobey God's word. Yeah. Because sometimes we think mm, this part of the word is not really that relevant for me. God, I know this is your word, but in this situation. Mm. But thankfully, even in the midst of Peter's human natural protest, he acknowledges who is in control, and then his actions catch up to his declaration, and Peter submits to the lordship of Jesus Christ. This is what I'm referring to. Jesus gives him instructions in verse 4. In verse 5, he's protesting, but before he does, what does he say? Master. Master. Yes. Then he says, you know, we've toiled all night. It's just the natural struggle, the flesh, the mind. But he's declared who's master in the situation. He's already declared who's master in his life. And we need to sometimes remind ourselves oh, yes. who's master Amen. in our lives. Yes. Because I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. Sometimes if you look how I'm acting, I think I'm the master of this shit. I think I'm the one in control, and God's like, well, okay, if you think so, but you're going to run amok soon, or <laughs> you can just be the first mate and let me be the captain, and you'll make yeah. it through. That's good. And so I've had to adjust sometimes, but Peter did, had to do the same thing, and so we need to recognize who is master of our lives, not just on Sunday but on Monday mm. and on Tuesday. And when I feel bad and when someone mistreats me or someone says something that shouldn't, they shouldn't have said to me, it's wrong. And my flesh says, you better believe it's wrong and you better love them. <laughs> yes. The flesh won't say that, but the spirit will. Amen. You see, there's only, we know there's one Lord, one King, one Savior, one Master. What's his name? Jesus. Oh, say that name again. Jesus. Jesus. Even when you say that name, you can feel that there's just a peace. There's Praise just a God. calm. Thank because you, it's not Jesus. just like Hallelujah. any other name. That's why even sometimes we've heard testimonies of people driving and they're about to get into an accident. They don't have time to pray a long intercessory prayer. All they say is Jesus. Amen. But when they say that name, something happens. Amen. Praise God. All heaven responds because that's a name like no other name. But if we're not careful, 
we can recognize who is in control of our lives by saying master mm -hmm. but then our words quickly show that the flesh is trying to take control because God's word does not always make sense to our human thinking. Right. But we must always recognize the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Mm. He is our master. Yes, we may have questions. We may have doubts and that's okay. God's big enough to take our questions, our frustrations, our doubts. Just don't walk away. Mm. But you can give whatever frustrations, even anger sometimes, tell it to God. I remember several months ago now, so there, there was a serious situation and I was out walking in Johannesburg, but I was having a little talk with God and a little heart to heart. And it was more frustration. God, what in the world are you doing? You can solve this. You can stop this. Why aren't you doing this? I'm here serving you. And there's this big issue on the other side of the world that I know you can take care of. I can't. And I'm going, I know you don't do that. But me, I was really giving it. <laughs> and I was frustrated. And we ask questions like this. How is all of this going to work out? After all this work, after all this effort, is it really worth more? God, I, I've sacrificed. I, I've been faithful. You've had similar questions. You may have even said something similar to this. Master, I really do not agree with your instructions about this particular situation. And that's okay if you say all of that, but then put it nevertheless mm. at your word, I will. And as long as you end with that phrase, I promise you everything's going to be okay. Mm. Praise God. It's all right for you to bear your soul and to give your frustrations to God. He wants that. He says, cast all your care upon me for I care for you. We know in Psalm 55 verse 22, it says casting your burden, cast your burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. It's okay to empty everything to God, but when you're finished, don't just stop there. Say, nevertheless, at your word, I will. God, there's some people, pardon the phrase, there, there's some people doing some stupid stuff, Lord. Nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to be a Christian. God, I know what they're doing is like, it's just, sometimes you want to mute the mic, right? Like there's no fix for stupid. And then you just say, but Lord, help these people and help my attitude. You see, it's okay to be honest with God, but don't just stop there unloading. When you're finished, say, God, at your word, I will. And if you will end with that, there will be such blessing and strength and liberty and renewal that comes. Because no matter how much you think you know, God always knows best. When it comes to this story in Luke chapter 5, I honestly do not know exactly how this miracle took place. I, I don't know if Jesus knew where the fish were going to be, or if Jesus being God manifest in the flesh told the fish to be there. <laughs> I, re I really don't know how this miracle of nature took place, but it was indeed a miracle but it came about because Peter said this makes absolutely no sense mm. to me but since you said it I'm gonna do it mm. no matter how much you may know nobody knows like Jesus right Peter and his team had done everything in their own power and strength but in the morning when they submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, when they submitted to the Master,
they started to experience more blessings than they could actually contain. And again, you see, when you begin to analyze the story, Jesus says, get in the boat, launch out into the deep. They're seeing nothing. Mm. But just because you don't see anything doesn't mean nothing's happening. Right. Because below the surface, there was a miracle that was beginning to oh, manifest itself, you, Jesus. but it was not visible Hallelujah. to the eye. But because Hallelujah. Peter said, this is crazy. And I'm sure there were other fishermen on the seashore thinking, where are they going? Well, you know, <laughs> let them do their thing. A little crazy, but hey, they're going out in the middle of the day. But what no one else saw was the miraculous, mm. was beginning to manifest. Hallelujah. Well, because the word of God manifests itself in any situation, no matter how hopeless, no matter how burnt over or tired, it may seem if you will obey the word of God, the miraculous happens. And so when they let down their nets, then to their surprise, the miraculous happened. And they called their, their partners, James and John, to come over. You know, sometimes we have a scarcity mindset. We think that the blessings of God are limited. You know, it's easy to weep with those that weep. Mm -hmm. But the other side, to rejoice with them that rejoice, that's a little harder. Because God, you're blessing them. What about me? Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> you forget my address? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of blessings flowing there. What about over here? The wind is not blowing the right way? <laughs> because we have a scarcity mindset and we think like there's not enough. And so God, what about me? But God is not limited. God does not have his children on rations. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you will obey yes. the word of God for your life, yes. for your situation, for your problem, I promise you, when the blessings of God follow your obedience, yes. there will be enough for you and you and yes. you and Praise you God. and Hallelujah. you. They call over their partners. And here's the thing. Both of their boats began to sink. Yes. My Lord, do you realize that there can be blessings of God that are beyond your capacity to hold? And if you will not share it with others, the blessings will sink you. Oh, yes, that's good. Because God does not have a scarcity of resources. And he says, I'm blessing you to bless others. And if you will just obey my word in the middle of what you think is nothing. Oh, yes. I will bring something. Praise God. I will bring restoration. I will bring renewal. I will bring growth. I will bring blessings. But you've got to obey my word at your word. I will. I will what? I will submit, God, to your instructions. Mm. No, it may not always be easy, but I will follow the principles of your word. I may not always feel victorious, but I will shout with the voice of triumph. Praise God. Hallelujah. I may not always see God's hand working, but I will bless the Lord. <laughs> At all times. Glory, glory, glory. I may not always even feel strong, but I know that my God is strong mm, and he's God. working on Hallelujah. my behalf. Mm. Whatever you're facing, mm. if you'll just renew, remind yourself of that principle, God, at your word, I will. Your situation can change. It will change. Hallelujah. It's just a matter of us lining ourselves up with Praise the word God. and being patient for the process. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, I, I just want to invite you to stand to your feet. Glory. Hallelujah for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for this word. Thank you, I Father. don't know what you're facing. Mm. You do. God does. Praise God. But the one thing we have in common is God. Mm, amen. And the word of God. Thank you, Lord. And his word that's forever settled Praise in heaven. Praise God. I want you just where you're standing right now to just begin to pray if you feel it's appropriate. Pray mm. for an attitude that chooses to obey God's word. Mm, yes, Lord. You know, that's an attitude. It's, it's a choice. And so just where you're at, sitting or standing, it's okay. But just begin to talk to God right now and just ask God, Lord, help me to have an attitude that chooses to obey your word. That's it. It's not always going to be easy. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus, I see you. Thank you. God, I pray in your name, Lord Jesus. It's not even going to always be convenient to obey God's word. Sometimes you may not even know how it's all going to turn out. That's why you pray, God, I want to have an attitude of obedience to your word. Even when I don't understand how the end will be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even, God, when it's not pleasant, convenient, easy, I'm still going to obey. Some of you have been working really hard on some situations in your life, but you're not seeing the desired outcome. Hallelujah. Some of you have struggles within your family that you've been doing your best to, to work and to solve, but you're not harvesting what you had desired. You're not seeing the results for the effort in. And some of you here are maybe even discouraged, like, God, really? Did, do you even hear me? And so tonight what I yes, want to do, I, I don't know what your situation yes, is. I, I don't know what your challenge may be, but I know the power of the word. Hallelujah. And you Thank know you the power Jesus. of the word. Amen. Amen. And so if you, in whatever situation you're facing, whatever struggle you may be in right now, if you're saying, God, Here's a fresh commitment that says, I don't even know how it's all going to end up, mm. but I'm going to obey your word. Amen. Nevertheless, yes. God, at your word, I will. Yes. If Lord. you just want to renew no, 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 your no. I will attitude to obey the word of God, I'm inviting you just to come to the front and let's just as one body of Christ, just lift our voice together and yes. just begin to say, God, I'm going to obey you. There, there can be a situation that you're thinking. This is what I want you to do as you're coming. What does God's word say about your situation? What does God's word say about whatever situation you're facing right now? Whether it's physical, whether it's, it's, it's a relational situation, what does the word of God say about your situation? And then begin to commit it to God right now. That's it. Some of you can feel that right now. That, that right there is just the presence of God that has just let us know that He's here. He's here in a very special way. That's it. Just open your heart right now. Lord, God, I sense your presence. At your word, God, I will. There's an incredible presence of the love of God in this place. The Bible tells us God is love. Right now, the love of God is in this place. First Corinthians 13 tells us that love is patient, it's kind. 
another part of the Word of God says that love covers a multitude of sins. It doesn't say it approves sin. But if you'll just confess that to God, love covers it. So there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's it. Just talk to God right now. There's, there's a refocusing taking place right now. In some of our minds and our spirits, there's a real life, but that's okay. You see, the love of God can do that. The love of God allows us to see as He sees and to feel as He feels and to respond as He responds. There are some of you here right now You've been hurt, and you've been hurt deeply. But right now, I tell you, the love of God is in this place to heal right now. You will just give it to God. I don't know what has been said to you or what has been done to you. But in the Holy Ghost, I've said some of you have been hurt deeply. But right now, you just, God, at your word, I will. And if that is you, then I, I can tell you some of the things that the Word of God says. It, it says forgive. But God, you don't know what they did to me. doesn't matter. Forgive. Leave their response to them. But you let the love of God right now fill you to overflowing. And embrace the uplift of grace. Embrace the forgiveness, the love of God. That's it. There's healing flowing right now. That's it. God, I will. It doesn't make sense, humanly speaking, because God, I know what that person did or said or tried to do. I don't know. But God, I, I'm going to move on. Because greater is he that is in you, my brother, my sister and he that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? As you bring yourself into alignment with the word, there's blessings that are going to follow you in the days and weeks and months to come. And when those blessings are experienced because of the manifestation of the word of God, it will be to his glory. And you just say, thank you, Jesus. But understand, it was your willingness to say, God, I will. I will. Francisco, hallelujah. The Lord says he sees the travail of your soul. He sees your, your labors in the flesh, in the natural realm. He sees your faithfulness, the both of you, and he's not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. You have loved and you have worked when it was frustrating. You felt it coming into your spirit. You felt your spirit being affected. And in desperation, how long, Lord? How long? Asking God for a turnaround. But the Lord has heard your prayer. And you're about to give birth to a crop of, of leaders. The Lord says you're not alone. But God says, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to give you 10. It's going to be 10 with your heart, with your burden, and with your vision. And this is the solution to everything. Hallelujah. It is the answer. God is going to raise up powerful leaders. And so you've been in a travail in your soul, and you're birthing something, and you felt a block. But God is going to remove the block, 
and the hindrance and the obstacles are going to begin to fall one by one. Hallelujah, because God is going to raise up leaders that are going to join with you and break in the strongholds of the enemy in, in these several countries that you are connected to. God sees your spirit has been right. You have endeavored to be just. You've endeavored to be fair. And you've stood up and done what God has asked you to do, even when there's been criticism. And now God's going to bless and God is going to open doors. I want everybody here. Yeah, does this mean anything to you? Amen. I want us all to extend our hands towards uh, Brother Cisco, Sister Cisco. If you want any ladies that are right there, just reach out and lay hands. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. And I see the blessing of the Lord coming down upon your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is going to lift this burden, this concern, your concern. And the Holy Ghost is going to give you peace. Hallelujah. God's going to give you peace. I pray the blessing of the Lord upon their family, upon their home. I pray the blessing of God upon them that they will sleep. That great will be their peace. They will have sweet sleep and not wake up troubled and questioning and turmoil, but they will know that the Lord is with them. Hallelujah. God, this time of wilderness is going to open up into the greatest time of productivity. The Holy Ghost says, Holy Ghost productivity. It's beginning. And the Lord says, I'm pouring out my spirit and I'm bringing about a unity. I'm bringing about an order, a righteous order. I'm bringing things into place and people into place. Do not fear, but trust 100% with all your heart that I am with you, I've called you, I've anointed you, I've appointed you, and blessing, blessing, blessing shall flow. Blessing shall flow, for I've heard your prayers, and breakthrough is coming. You are birthing something. Hallelujah. Keep pushing in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Keep worshiping in the Holy Ghost. Keep believing in the Holy Ghost. The Lord is preparing the way. God's got his bulldozers out. And they're pushing the obstacles. The mountains are coming down and God's filling the valleys and he's straightening out the crooked places. And you are the ones that God has chosen. He has chosen you to step in and God has anointed you and filled you with the power and the wisdom. And you've exercised the self-control. And God will bless you for your meekness. And God will bless you for your gentleness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We speak over Africa, South Africa, the Sudan, and all of these countries, oh Lord, that they're connected with, oh God. Bring them into alignment with your purposes, oh God, and speak to your people. Speak to leaders, oh God, and bless, and bless them with the knowledge of your will. Bless them with revelation. And bless them, oh God, with, oh God, just the coming together like never before. We thank you, God, you are raising them up, Lord. And you're going to multiply God's ministry tenfold. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to prophesy for some of you that are, are here today. Hallelujah. The, the Holy Ghost says that God is going to bring us as a church into a place of relationship where we hear the voice of God and know the voice of God. And God is directing us. And those of you in business, God is going to give you direction. God's going to give you answers and solutions and strategies hallelujah to bring the blessing of the lord upon your business if your heart is surrendered to the lord amen if you are if you are yielded don't ever fear the trials and the struggles and the storms that may come along the way because god sometimes uses these things to bring things into alignment into his perfect will but god says he will give you a wisdom if you start praying for the wisdom of the lord Hallelujah. God will bless you and God will bless your business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I speak to the church tonight and I say that God is desirous to pour out his blessing upon your families. If you want that, lift up your hands right now and begin to pray. Begin to pray for your children. Begin to pray for your spouses right now. 
that each one of us will come into alignment with the will and the purpose of God because nothing that the enemy does can keep you from being blessed when you come into alignment with the Lord. God, we surrender our wills to you. We surrender, oh God, our thoughts to you. We surrender our desires to you. We yield to you and we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will just be in control, that you will guide us and direct us, oh Lord. That you'll help us, Lord, to live a fully surrendered life. Oh God, we're expecting your blessing. We're expecting God things to fall into place. We're expecting, oh God, you to just line things up how you desire in our lives. Hallelujah. Can we lift our voices and begin to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Can you lift your voices and begin to praise God if you believe the word of the Lord? I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I thank you, God. Your blessings falling on my life. Your blessings falling on my family. Your blessings falling on my business. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Your blessings falling on my career. Oh, God. I just desire to do your will and to walk in your perfect purpose. Hallelujah. We know that all things work together for good. All things, all things, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to those that are called according to his purpose. God, when we get your purpose in mind, when we are following you, Lord, with a steadfast heart, oh God, not being double-minded, but God, totally committed to doing your will. God, we know that you are going to come through with the answers that we need. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you're asking us, oh God, to completely trust your word, the word that God, ha you have given to us. Hallelujah. Paul was in a storm with a lot of other people. We don't know if it was spiritual in origin or if it was just a, a freak thing of nature. But when Eurachlodon began to blow and it looked like they were going to lose everything and they'd even spoken of killing all the, all the prisoners. But, to, but because Paul was on board and the favor of God was on his life, the entire ship was saved. Hallelujah. And the word that God gave to Paul was, you want to be saved, you stay in the ship. You think that the answer might be to jump out, but the word of the Lord is stay in the ship. But the ship is shaking. The ship is quaking. The ship is stuck. And it was. Part of it was stuck in the mud and the waves were still beating and trying to push it. He said, you stay in the, stay in the ship until the Lord says. And there came a point where the ship broke. And he said, those that can swim, swim to shore. And those that cannot grab a piece of the ship, but hold on to the ship, amen? Hold on to the ship. How many know that Jesus is the ship? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And where is body? Where is body? And the Bible says, holding on to the head, from whom all the body, its joints and bands, receives nourishment. Amen. Hallelujah. And they got to where they needed to go. They got to shore safely. Amen. Paul said these words. He said, I believe it shall be according to the word of the Lord. I believe the word of the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to get to Rome and I'm going to testify of Jesus Christ before Caesar. God has said, I'm going to get there. And he never promised you that you wouldn't have a shipwreck. He never promised you that you wouldn't go through a storm. In fact, he promised the opposite. He said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Amen. They got to the shore. Amen. And the, the Bible says the barbarians on the shore, they received them warmly. They built a fire. There was food. There was comfort. And as Paul was reaching for a pile of sticks, a viper jumped out. Let me tell you something. That whole ship was saved because of the faithfulness of that one man who heard from God. They watched that viper attack Paul and they said, surely there's something wrong with them or this wouldn't be happening. But the devil was upset because all those people were saved. They never lost a soul. How many of those prisoners on board, how many of those soldiers do you think got saved on the island of Melita when Paul was praying for Publius? I believe his name was there's a father-in-law on the island of a great chief man, and he was sick of a bloody flux. He was dying, 
And Paul prayed for him and he was healed. And all the sick came to, on the island to Paul. And he was praying for them. And they were having a revival broke out in Melita. Do you think Melita was impacted? Absolutely. What about all those soldiers that saw the miracles performed at the hands of Paul? Do you think that they were impacted? What about all the prisoners? Do you think some of them turned to faith in Jesus? Is it any wonder that a viper came out with a bunch of sticks to latch a hold of Paul? But you know what? Paul said, none of these things move me. He shook it off in the fire. And that's what you've got to learn to do. When you come under attack of the enemy, you need to learn to shake it off. Keep throwing some wood on the fire. Let's build the fire. Let's build the praise. Let's build the prayer and fasting. Amen. If we'll do our business, God will certainly do his business. Amen. And I'm just telling you, brother, you are doing the business of the Lord. You came on business. You folks have come on business for the king. And I speak the blessing of the Lord. I speak you will not be frustrated. But God is causing things to fall into place. And he'll do it for every single one of us. Yeah, you'll have some storms. Yeah, you're going to have some pain. Amen. That's all part of the birthing process. And there will not be a birthing of a revival in this place without some pain. Can you say amen? You don't birth anything without some pain and some discomfort. But oh, the joy. Oh, the joy of seeing souls come in. Oh, the joy of singing, seeing God pull things together the way it needs to be, amen. Would you lift your hands and surrender to the Lord? I don't know how sensitive you are to the Holy Ghost, but I'm telling you something, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. I'm in the Holy Ghost. I'm not walking in the flesh, amen. I'm fasting and I'm praying, and you better be fasting and praying too. And you better hear the voice of God and harmonize with what the Spirit of God is saying because God is serious about our attitude right now. We better have an attitude. Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Be it unto me according to thy word, Mary said. Hallelujah. I'm not going to respond, Lord, to your powerful word this morning and tonight with doubt, but I'm going to respond, oh God, with Lord, whatever you want to do in my life, oh God. To fulfill your word to it, Lord. Have your way, I pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to tell you something. That was good teaching. That was good. I could, I could listen to this man for another three hours. His wife's even better. <laughs> Amen. They're good people. Amen. Thank God for his wonderful word. I don't know if during prayer request tonight, if um, Sister Glenna Long's name was mentioned. Was that mentioned? No. All right. You probably just didn't hear. I had just received a message from her that she's had a fall and had been taken to the Sussex Hospital. And if you don't mind, brother, on our way back to Freddie uh, tonight, um, maybe we could just stop by the hospital and I can check on her and see how she's doing was here this afternoon to see a uh, dear saint of God from St. George. He's in there, been in there for 10 months. And then also Sister Doris was in to see her and uh, had a word of prayer, had a lovely visit with her. Amen. But I want us to lift our voices and let's pray for Sister Glenda right now. Would you? Lord, we just lift up our dear sister. God, we pray that you would touch her by your power. Lord, and that you would bring comfort to her soul. I know this is been traumatic for her in senior Lord that has a fall that is difficult but we pray that he would touch her Lord we love her we love our seniors we pray God that you will minister to her hallelujah and we pray God that you will have your your way Lord just bring healing oh God stability to her we pray in Jesus name is there anybody here tonight in this service that you need you need prayer for anything physically if you're needing strength or needing a touch from the Lord. The beautiful power of God is here in this place flowing. Amen. And if you want to step out for prayer, just raise your hand. I can come. We can come to where you are and pray for you. Amen. Jesus was moved with compassion and he healed the sick. And I feel the compassion of the Lord. Amen. Did I see somebody raise their hand over here? All right. Would you just come over, those of you that are handy, come over and pray. Who are we praying for tonight? I'm sorry, I didn't see the Sister Rod. Sister Rod, okay. Amen. 
Oh, brother, brother. Oh, it's for him. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, let's pray for them both right now. Hallelujah. Just help us pray. If you're standing around, you want to just come. Thank you, Lord. And just stretch, stretch your hand towards brother and sister Rod. And Father, we just pray for healing, for strength, for power. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And I'm believing God for brother and sister Rod. The healing power of God to come upon them. Strength, oh God, for both of them. Minister to them. Thank you, God, that you are faithful. I believe, Lord, that right now you are touching them. I believe, Lord, that you really do care, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody else that needs prayer? Amen. This is a wonderful praying church. We would love to pray for you if you need a touch from the Lord. Just slip up your hand. Don't be shy. Anybody else need prayer? All right, sister. Amen. Did you want prayer, sister? All right, you just, why don't you just step out here and we're going to pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the healing power touch our sister, oh God. Cleansing, oh God, healing. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Thank you, oh God, for your touch. Thank you for your healing power. In the name of Jesus. Oh, do you feel the Holy Ghost here tonight? I feel the presence of the Lord. Anybody else need prayer? Amen. Just slip up your hand. Amen. Or just take another couple of moments. Amen. What a beautiful presence of God is here. Amen. Don't you just love? Oh, let's just take a moment and worship the Lord together. Don't you love what you feel? Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the mountain, cleansed by His blood. Let's go and be the church and love one another. Love the lost. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord.